Woo, baby! Uh, I forgot to uh, video uh, what I'm doing today. <laughs> I'm putting gears in my, my Gladiator. Got the front end all ripped apart here. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna show you the process because there's plenty of other people who have done this already on YouTube. But look at this. We're going to uh, 513 gears from 410s because we're running 37s. Most people run like a 488, but since I'm planning on towing and heavy, carrying heavy loads, I've decided to go with 513s for a little extra power. So far, it has taken me probably a day and a half on the back. So far, the front has only taken me about three hours to get this far. I'll show you what we're doing over here. So we've already driven in the new races in here, up in here for your pinion. And then over here, we have already stripped the diff right here, right here. So let me tell you the quickest and easiest way to get these bearings off of here. <laughs> Freaking cutting wheel. A lot of people said to buy this worthless tool here that I did buy, a uh, bearing puller. That did not work. Like, it just would not work on the bearing. So I found that just by using this and cutting a little slot down it and then taking a yonder chisel and just cutting it, I was done with that in like five minutes. It took me so long on the back axle because I kept trying to use the puller and everything to get it off. But if you want to do it really fast, just carefully cut your bearings off with that baby and your install time will be half of what you thought it would be. Next time, I will definitely pay the $1,500 to have this in done. This in my shop and uh, bought all the tools. I probably spent like $300 for, well, no. If you count the new impact gun I bought, where's that baby at? <laughs> this Milwaukee Fuel half inch right here. This baby has got the power to get them bolts out. I don't know, I'm talking in a weird voice because it's late at night and I'm tired. Anyway. Got that thing. I bought all the rest of these stupid tools I have hardly used for way too much money. Um, it's just a lot of hand tools, a lot of banging, pounding. And uh, we'll be done with this hopefully tomorrow sometime. But doing this in the shop, I would not suggest doing this on the ground. It is much easier to do this if you're an old man like me in your 40s. Just put it on the lift so much better anyway uh let me show you the back here all right so here's what we got going on in the back we got 37s the razor mts and we put a terraflex diff cover on the back we filled that baby up she's all sealed up she's all lubed up and everything is back like it should be and uh yeah excited to get the front done Setting the gears was not as hard as I thought it would be. It does take some patience because you got to go in and out, in and out. Uh, looks like somebody's been in here before. I don't think this is a factory factory piece right here. See that, that glue right there. So we're going to go ahead and start putting the front end back together. And then I'm we're going to do a quick little review after it's all done. And I drive it a little bit and see how the power is. And see if we can blow up the gears or if I set them correctly. I'm guessing I set them correctly. They are in spec from what I can find out there in the interwebs. So anyway, this is just a quick little tip to make your life a little bit easier when you're doing gears. Just pay somebody. Just pay someone. I've learned my lesson. I had the money. I, I paid for half the tools. I could have just sat on my butt and let someone else do it over the weekend. What's wrong with me? <sighs> Tired. All right. I'll come back when we got the this back together here and two talk. hours later okay get the bearings pressed back on on the top and the bottom um and the locker mechanism when you are putting this baby on make sure you get the little there's like five little teeth that go into a little spot on here make sure that they're actually in their right spot before you start pressing that bearing on or you'll have a bad day i almost did it to myself be careful 
There we go. Bottom bearing, top bearing. Make sure you torque the bolts that hold your ring gear on to 100 foot pounds. Uh, I saw a lot of people that said you needed to heat that baby up, the uh, ring gear, to about 200 degrees. Don't need to. None of mine. I used Revolution gears. They seem really well machined from what I've seen. There's no burrs, there's no nothing on them. Really clean. So um, just stick those babies on, bolt them up, torque them down to 100 foot pounds, press your bearings on. Now you're ready to go back inside. Your but diff. before you go back into the diff, the other thing you gotta do is press this bearing onto the bottom. I had one shim, and the shim actually goes right behind this, um, what is that called? Race. So I just put the same one back there that I had. I think that'll be pretty close. It was just fine on the back when I put it together. Um, this is the old crush sleeve and it was actually, it just fell off. It's kind of funny because the back one, I had to actually force it off. So we are definitely getting closer. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the back um, pinion now. So I'm gonna put that in up like this. And then we'll do a couple test fits, make sure everything's good. And then we'll put our gasket in and we are pretty good to go. We'll be back. Once we get the diff in and all set up, I'll show you. All right, guys, we have checked the backlash. I was at like point, uh, zero five, let's see, zero, zero five. So like five thousandths, which is right in spec. And then my tooth pattern's pretty good. It's right in the middle. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so next thing I do is take it all back apart put in the crush thing, crush sleeve, wherever that went, things over on the other table here, and the seal on the pinion, get it all together, and then we use this little inch pound meter to set it so it's at about 25 inch pounds of resistance on the, on the pinion itself. So here's our new pinion nut, here's our new seal, and of course our new crush sleeve. So that's where we're at. Looking pretty good, not too hard this time. So we'll just set this here for tomorrow to put everything back together. And then we'll use our new pinion nut. And I did forget to stake the pinion nut on the back, unfortunately. Or maybe it's just a lock washer anyway. I think, oh yeah, it is. Okay, Never mind. I don't have to stake it. So yeah, we'll finish this up tomorrow, button her all up and then take her for a drive. I have to recalibrate the computer so it knows it has 513 gears and very excited to see how it does, how it, how, how it drives with 35s or 37s. Man, I'm tired. Almost 10 o'clock at night. I've been up since 4.50 this morning, so I'm a little bit bushed, knackered, tired, whatever. So. I'm excited for this mod. We're going to Moab next week, so this should be awesome for driving down there. Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow. Peace out. All right, day three on the diff. I forgot to like say anything when I got in today, but I like you know, whatever. Uh, so last night, sorry, last night we finished up uh, test fitting everything. This morning I pulled out the diff again. I set, put in the crush, what, crush, what the heck is that thing called? Hmm. I put in the crush whatever thing, my jigger, in there, and then uh, crushed it down, made sure that it was good and crushed, <laughs> and then uh, pulled off the, the pinion flange again, and then we uh, put the seal in, and then put the pinion flange back on, and then we did our uh, drag like the test to make sure see how much uh drag we have on this we have 25 foot pounds which is right in spec feels nice and tight so all we gotta do is put our uh diff back in and then button everything up so i'm gonna put that back in and start buttoning everything up and i'll come back when uh, we got her done anyway this front end is going much quicker i think i'm into about two hours now or maybe three but
yeah, so easy once you know what you're doing to tear stuff apart. Anyway, boop, don't hit your head. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, we are in final assembly. We've got driver's side back together, brakes and everything, shaft all back together, diff covers now on. This side, we are working on passenger side right now. I like to copper coat everything I put together. That way, uh, later, you'll just come apart really nice and easy. We have, I don't remember, the axle disconnect, whatever, thingamajigger to go back on. We've got brakes to go back on and the uh, unit bearing. So come back when that's all on and show you what it looks like. All right, we have the whole front end is done. Put back together, got to do a little cleaning. But uh, yeah, I've had this skid plate sitting around. I don't even know who made it. I bought it used from some dude and I've had it like a year. So I finally put that on. Uh, we got the TerraFlex diff cover on. She's all filled up. Everything's tight, torqued down and just got to uh, break in the gears, drain the oil in a 500 miles. I wonder if I can get 500 miles on it before we go to Moab next week. Probably not, but everything's all done. Woo. So the front end took me about three hours to get all done and wasn't that bad back end took me <laughs> about eight hours because i didn't know what i was doing or i had improper tools but she's done we're gonna i got one more little thing i gotta do to the i gotta make sure i torque down the rear drive shaft just go through that thing a little bit and then we are done eli came over and helped me for a minute he's got Jeez. mop hair today <laughs> so all right that wasn't too bad uh, would I do it again? No, I would pay somebody $1,500 to do that. I would trade them a motorcycle or something that I have lying around. Not, not the funnest thing I've ever done, but I did learn a new skill that I'll never use again. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out. All right. I've had the uh, gears in the Jeep now for a couple days and uh, put about 300 miles on right now. So we're trying to get up to 500 before we go down to Moab in a couple days. So far, it is a marked improvement. My gas mileage is up a bit, maybe two miles per gallon. Uh, my problem is I hot rod it all the time. Um, eighth gear is back. She's, I haven't seen eighth gear very much. And if I do, it just keeps sitting there and going in between seven and eight all the time so that's back uh overall drivability is really nice i really like the 513s i'm glad i went with that instead of 488s and since i do like to do a lot of overlanding stuff and usually carry a bunch of gear when i go um i think it's really going to help out i think the next major mod for this thing is going to be an extended range fuel tank 300 miles per tank is okay but having like an extra 100 miles just in case would be great. I usually carry a five gallon jerry can, but that takes up room in the back, in the in the, in the the bed. So yeah, overall, I, I'm really liking it. I haven't had a single problem with the gears. Uh, I don't think I'll ever do them myself again, even though I know how to now, but it just took a lot of time. And it's kind of a pain, less stressful anyway. So I, uh, I'd say definitely do this mod if you got the money. Uh, if you got the skills to do it yourself, uh, do it yourself. Uh, make sure you keep everything in spec. And I've got no gear noise. The only noise I have now are my tires, which are loud as hell. Uh, but that's okay. I prefer mud tires over all trains and they're pretty aggressive. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for this mod. Hopefully you got some of the tips out of when I was putting together the front end that will help you out if you decide to do this yourself and uh, wish you luck and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.